Parliament, uh, Chandan Mitra and Jonathan Swami. So I'd like to ask them to come up uh, and take your places behind the microphone. And then I believe we have uh, microphones on both sides of the room. Uh, so if you would like to ask a question, uh, please identify yourself. Uh, be best if you could keep it to a question, but if you have a preface commentary, that's all right, so long as it's not too long. And so uh, let's get started. Who would like to start? All right down here. Thank you. Peter Fry with uh, Impact America. As you have noted in your remarks, you know, India is located next to two nuclear weapon states, China, you know, and Pakistan. And we in the United States have shared your concerns about countries like Pakistan, if they were to be, for example, taken over by, by the Taliban or the Iran, getting hold of even a single nuclear weapon. Even a single nuclear weapon, doing something like an EMP attack, for example, could destroy our whole country. I know, um, what do you think of the Obama administration has proposed a global zero movement to try to eliminate nuclear weapons, but most strategic thinkers believe that that is unrealistic. What do you think about a possibility of sort of a halfway measure where the use of nuclear weapons, for example, for mass destruction of cities or in something like an EMP attack, you know, that their actual employment for those things should be made illegal the way we've made illegal chemical and biological use? Is that a realistic, a more realistic approach, do you think, to trying to control the threat from states like China and Pakistan? Well, I think uh, there is uh, a global dialogue and also a bilateral dialogue between our two countries which is on on this subject. Now, whereas uh, both non-proliferation and eventual elimination is an idea which uh, has been discussed, but I think uh, before one can make a final comment, Keeping in mind our India's domestic priority because uh, we are, as you mentioned uh, very fairly in your question, surrounded by some countries uh, which have that strength. And in some of the cases, uh, how far they will re remain disciplined in the use of it and who controls it itself raises serious questions. And I think uh, what India would open up to would eventually depend on which way the dialogue goes and which way the global situation really develops. For me to make uh, an uh, affirmative comment uh, in the course of the discussion at this stage on uh, 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 what India really would uh, commit itself to may not be possible. Okay. Yes, sir, over here. Thank you. Uh, my name is Paul Nelson, and I actually have a question regarding something Mr. Gently said in his um, remarks a second ago. You mentioned the importance of not delegitimizing um, completely this uh, new regime that's risen up in Pakistan um, for the reason that uh, it encourages the radicals to stand up and um, gives them sort of a talking point um, to leverage their um, actions against in, in, in favor of taking over the um, the, the governmental apparatus. At the same time, obviously, we do have a government that has been ineffective, obviously, um, at its intelligence services and certainly um, its military cooperation with the United States. So I, I wanted to ask a little bit more about the proper way that the United States and the international community can engage with this regime um, that has, uh, that did fail to capture Osama bin Laden. I think it's a uh it's a, it's, it, it, what's happening in Pakistan is legitimately a worrisome situation, uh, not only for India, for the entire world. And uh, therefore, quite understandably, it's, a, it's an issue on which uh, there is a huge concern even within the United States as to particularly what's happened in the last uh, few months in Pakistan. You see, we must first be clear about uh, who is it that we are dealing with in Pakistan. Originally, we had six decades of uh, Pakistan surviving strongly and its quality surviving strongly on an anti-India sentiment. Recent polls have shown that uh, the anti-America sentiment is perhaps stronger uh, than what even the anti-India sentiment is, particularly after the, uh, uh, the killing of uh, Osama bin Laden. 
the civilian government is there, but the civilian government has uh, some role, a limited role itself. You had the army and the ISI, which was the intelligence agency, which was considered virtually invincible within the domestic uh, administration. But even they seem to be losing their confidence at the moment because of a strong criticism as to how it happened. So a certain kind of duplicity or dualism is maintained by them. You speak one language to the international community, you address your domestic audiences with yet another language. And therefore, in such a situation, what do we do? I could have simply ended by saying that, well, we must continue to engage them. But I went a little step further and said, yes, we must continue to engage them. The level of engagement and what really comes out of that engagement will depend on which roadmap Pakistan adopts in the continuing years. If it's a roadmap where it gets increasingly radicalized, its army gets increasingly radicalized, some of these witches and attacks which have taken place uh, on their own army establishments have shown that the radicals within the system itself had a role to play in it. Now, if that's a kind of a dangerous course that they take, then engagement will still continue. The Americans will engage them more than we are able to do. But the likely outcome of the engagement itself will uh, leave us, uh, or its success possibility will leave us in a doubt. But then it is that uh, Pakistan more, moves more the, uh, 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 the less radical way, the more democratic way, the political establishment's strength uh, as against the <coughs> army Romanian governance increases, then I'm quite certain that uh, engagement with Pakistan on various issues uh, certainly can improve. Now, as far as India, we are concerned, despite all these events taking place, we've had our Commerce Secretary visit them recently, and instead of 100 items we are trying to open out by the end of the year, suggestion which has been given by India is to make it almost 5,000 items of trade, so we must uh, make it uh, uh, open across the border, the line border itself. Uh, you can resume various forms of dialogue. Our Home Secretaries are meeting, our Defense Secretaries are meeting, our Army officials are meeting, but then, as I said, the, the success of this engagement or the real output would emerge out of which course Pakistan takes. And I do hope and pray that uh, they go on a course which is more acceptable uh, both to their own people and to the world at large. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, Sorry. Go ahead. Okay, right here. Get a microphone. Thank you for your presentation. And I so then I'm moving from the American Enterprise Institute. I have a question about the BJP and the India-US relationship. And one of the things you mentioned in your comments was that historically, uh, the BJP was seen as the party within India's polity that tended to support a closer India-US relationship. And this, of course, went back to the Cold War. And of course, when in power between 1998 and 2004, the BJP was instrumental in taking the relationship to a new level. And both of these points are widely acknowledged. Um, however, in Washington, there's certainly been um, a certain amount of confusion, and I might say disappointment is not too strong a word, about the BJP, how the BJP has calibrated its response to, for example, the Indo-US nuclear deal. And so the question sort of that, that people are asking over here is that, does the BJP still stand for that relationship has, as it has historically? And if so, um, how does it explain the party's stand on the Indo-US nuclear deal? And a follow-up question, which is that looking ahead, um, what are some of the initiatives, or what are sort of some of, what, what, what's the vision that the BJP has for, this, uh, for the Indo-US relationship? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. You see, the, not only did we historically, as you rightly mentioned, stand for a closer relationship, we did post-1998 make a positive beginning. I would only urge you that uh, the BJP's vision of the Indo-US relationship should not only be seen through the prism of the nuclear deal itself. They, we, we were not, as a matter of fact, uh, opposed to a relationship or opposed to a deal. We, were, uh, we had reservations about some parts of it. And this was being voiced by our colleagues uh, 
predominantly on the ground of limiting some of our options, particularly on account of what was happening in the neighborhood as the question was just asked. But now, years later, it's a done deal. And therefore, as I said, we don't, in the BJP, look at this relationship only through the prism of the deal. If we had, uh, because of our own uh, perception, and it was a legitimate perception, of the region that we are located in, our own reservation on some parts of it, I think uh, that hasn't distracted us uh, from uh, <coughs> what we believe this should be the relationship. As we mentioned in, in various forms, whether it's the commercial term, it's, it's, it's various forms of dialogue which is on as far as technology, science, health, education, economy, trade. Now, these are huge areas. But we must, while discussing this, always remember that India also is too large a democracy, accountable to its own public opinion. So despite these factors, there still will be areas in future where on certain issues we may not have identical views between New Delhi and the stance that you have in Washington. After all, both uh, countries have their own perception of uh, given events. But those uh, different visions in no way dilute the spirit behind the relationship as has been built up over the years. And I think this, it's, it, that relationship itself has become a global reality.